I think the finance helped me, you know, going to school for finance and being around people that were in this type of structure made me think bigger. Someone would like my art. And I was like, wait, what do you mean? Someone likes my art? This is crazy. Like I never even thought about selling art, execute that. Like, am I going to be a t-shirt designer or am I an artist? But I think that like understanding that the more eyeballs that come in, the more inquiries that come in, there's a better chance of the transaction on the back end. What's popping everybody? Nikki over here hosting a very, very good friend of mine today, Mr. Anthony Riccardi. This gentleman is a hyper local artist, but internationally recognized. Today, we go on to talk about the very first painting he sold and the last one he sold, which was this morning. It was a very, very big price difference, so you'll get to find out a little bit more about that. And uh, not only is he an awesome artist, but very interesting. He has a finance background. That's what we do, so lots of synergies there. Great, great family man, moral compass is in the right place, and he's just an inspiration all around. So uh, without further ado, Mr. Anthony Riccardi. Let's go. Thank you for joining us Thank today. you. So, Mr. Riccardi, where What's do we on? start? How's it going? <laughs> Grateful to be here. That's a good, that's a good start, but yeah. 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 Find, find your story really, really interesting. I tell it when you're not in the room sometimes <laughs> when you are i know you hear me uh go on about you sometimes but just a big fan of yours i love what you're doing all across the board is you're a family man you're you're an artist that's super passionate about what it is you're doing but you came out of the finance industry which i feel is is also a really cool story given our relationship yep. and and on our past and our history and now where we are today and how we work together and and you having that financial background and being in the finance game, but not being one tenth as passionate about it as where it is you are now. Yeah. And then making that leap and that jump, I find is like the coolest thing ever, right? Because it's just two worlds that are polar opposite of one another. And, you know, you not only making that leap and doing what you love to do, but you're just crushing it, right? So mm. I know that was a lot right at the beginning. No, thank you. Right? But I, I just kind of wanted to do a bit of an intro to give people some insight and, and an idea as as to that but go on tell us a little bit about your story you know it's it's funny uh, coming from so I, I did i went to school for finance you yeah. know i grew up playing baseball i never really thought anything out else but baseball um art was always a passion of mine but it didn't seem real you know growing up no one said become an artist um my uncle fab who, who you know yeah. um he you know he was an artist but transparently he was like nah don't do art like you do it as a passion yeah so like that he was my biggest inspiration in the art world telling me like just to do it as a passion so i did and everyone always asked me since I left, you know, I, I quit uh, finance about six and a half, seven years ago now. Like, I must have hated it. You know, honestly, it, there was so much entrepreneurial tendencies in the finance world. I was, in a, I was at a mortgage investment fund mm -hmm. that we were doing, you know, 50 to $150 million land deals, development deals. It was very entrepreneurial in its core. And I think that's what I was in my yeah. core. Like, I'm an entrepreneur that chose art as my medium. So as I started painting at nights and weekends, you know, the entrepreneurial bug kicked in and I was like, wait, I can do this. Like I can make this into something and, you know, I can open up galleries, like the whole list that we ended up doing. But it, it came from a core of being an entrepreneur and wanting to try new things. Um, but, but finance, it, it was always fun. I mean, like I, I see, I don't know, we, we spend a lot of time now and I get to see like you working through deals or thinking through things. I'm like, I, I miss that like that bug as well uh, because art is very different mm. art is a much more like more passionate project where yeah. we talk about the love and things and, and that that is a, a side of me but like the the grind side of like making deals work and figuring out structures and understanding how to make things work um is exciting yeah yeah very cool and you, now well you're balancing a bit of both now right so you're, you're the passion inside of you and and what it is you love to do is is getting that and expressing that art onto whatever material it is and then you're still running a business as well right yeah. because you're you're not just selling piece by piece yeah but you're you're in galleries you're you're doing the uh, the airport now yeah you're doing you know business on an international level you're not only hand delivering these paintings to your clients but then 
and you're doing prints and, yep. and you're doing you know mass scale and volume as well so i've noticed there's there's again a lot of moving parts in, yeah, in yeah, your yeah. business right because that's what it is it, the jewelry aspect of yep. it i know your wife has some involvement there but you're you're you got your hands in in a few different areas sure. and that's i think the the finance helped the me day, like right? you know going right. to school for finance and being around people that were in this type of structure made me think bigger right because i think the biggest you know i've had the the benefit of speaking to a lot of young artists speaking at the ocads of the world and to art schools of the world and a, a lot of them and a lot of them just think about the art they think about the canvas they think about the brush yeah. the paint i'm like guys the paint doesn't matter like yeah. the, the the type of paint you use it's the whole entire infrastructure around what you're doing yeah. of course the art needs to be beautiful but at the end of the day there's paintings with one red dot that sell for 50 million bucks like yeah. why so me trying to understand that why has made me create this like infrastructure like you know richardi paints the ink like my company that wants to do murals that wants to do brand collaboration mm -hmm. that wants to do like all of that like developmental stuff um is extremely important to being an artist because like just selling a singular canvas eventually that canvas will feel like work and i won't love it anymore mm -hmm. so doing all of the things around it make me enjoy it right right yeah, yeah. i love that and a uh, little bit of work happening with your wife right so i know you guys are raising the family yeah. together and she's a little bit involved in your business yeah how is it that you separate um the, the family side and, and and the business side for and sure still have so my wife was she was a teacher um she was okay. a high school teacher and about five and a half years ago when i opened up my first gallery in yorkdale i was being overwhelmed like we had we had employees working but at the end of the day like my wife would come you know work at night or like just help me out yeah and then eventually it was like well why don't we just do this full time and first of all she's absolutely fantastic i've been together for 15 years so i'm very very lucky to have her as like a, a partner in life but then it also I enjoyed working with her, so I was like, "Well, why don't we just do this full time?" So she ended up leaving her job, uh, you know, five almost six years ago now to like full work full time with me. And then we've done a bunch of different projects together. We did the jewelry line, like you mentioned, and um, I mean, all my travel. We've been able to all the murals that I've done around the world or shows. She's been able to come, and now my son um, have been able to come along with me, and we tack on a couple extra days for vacation. So everything turns into like a family event which mm. has been very very special nice yeah. that's so cool yeah that's so cool how you've incorporated that and, and it really works for both sides yeah right? yeah it's awesome um i know you're on a militant routine right sometimes we try to be like you to the, trying uh, to be like you together right yeah and, and have some fun on the pickleball courts in the middle in the morning but tell us how important that is for you as, yeah. as a high performing entrepreneur as, yeah. as a killer dad as an awesome family man right like just that it goes yeah. you know it goes back to i mentioned earlier that I, I went to school in Alabama on a baseball scholarship and like a lot of the people that I saw whether it's my coach whether it's teammates of mine that ended up going to play in the major leagues the the structure in which they structure their days the amount of work they put in after hours anybody can go to practice like anybody can come to work what you're doing after is everything it's like what makes you special what makes the greats great so I took those those lessons those skills from my my playing days um, into my regular life now like I you know, we were just talking about it off air. It was like just trying to get the diet checked in, trying to do everything we can for our health. And there's there's different things available to us today that we can take and to amplify our, our ability. And that's what I'm just trying to do it all. Like we're just yeah. trying to be because to be a, an active, uh, you know, present father, like as you are, we need to have energy. We yeah. can't just come home burnt out yeah. and to have energy. We got to be in shape. To have energy, we need to eat right. We need to put the right fuel in our body. Uh, my old, my coach used to make this reference, and I love it. He said, you got to think of yourself as a premium car. Like, if you're a luxury vehicle, you put premium gas in your car. You don't put the cheap gas in your premium vehicle. It's the same thing as our bodies. If I'm considering myself as a high-level, you know, active person, I need to put premium gas. And that's the way we treat it. That's the way we maintain it. That's the way we put the food in our body. Mm -hmm. And that's the only way we're going to operate at a luxury premium level. So it's... It's extremely important, and I, I think that um, no, and you're an inspiration, like truly, like just seeing you get after it and everything inspires me. And I think that's the circle of people that we relate with, and that are our friends, and that are in our circles. Um, we're all very like minded, and it's it's you got to keep pushing. Yeah, absolutely, and contribution and purpose. I see you getting involved with a lot of different charity charities. Um, you were you were kind enough to pull up at our charity event. Yeah, and that was fun. Painted do live. a live activation, which sold for a good amount of money, and which yeah. was so nice. Um, that's just a big, big part of what you're doing ongoing, though. It's not like yeah. there's one or two that you do a year. Like there's always something that you're involved with. So tell us what what your belief system is on that, and 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 why you're so awesome. Just give yeah. me that. You know, 
I, I just believe it's so important because there was always, especially early on, there was this concept that like someone would like my art. And I was like, wait, what do you mean someone likes my art? This is crazy. Like I never <laughs> even thought about selling art. I was like, oh my God, someone likes my art. And it started with charity work where I saw a piece of mine that can raise funds for you know, for a charity that can then go to doing good. I was like, well, I just want to amplify this. I do a lot of charity. I think, you know, we tallied it up recently, but in the last like three, four years, probably in raised funds, probably between 500 to 600,000 in donated <laughs> in, in paintings. And it's, 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 it's crazy. And it's fantastic. Cause I've been able to, you actually see the change. And a lot of these charities that we work with, we can actually see the functional structural change that these dollars are going to. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's the biggest joy ever. Cause not only does somebody get a painting, the funds that are raised go to incredible causes all around the world. And then we, everyone gets, it's, it's there's just joy all around. Right. And, yeah. and we've done our own like uh cast. My wife and I have done our own, like in terms of financial donations and well, we bought buy a lot at those charities as well. A lot of the paintings that are in my collection, I've bought from charities. So I just think it's a, it's a cycle that it's so important. And, um, and I, I'm happy and I'm grateful that people want my art in their charities. They know it'll raise money. That's fantastic. Yeah. It's a good, it's a good thing. So cool. Yeah. Such a, such a cool outlook. Now, Talk to us about like the international recognition that you're getting and, and what parts of the world that some people are in that have an appreciation for your art. And if yeah. there's certain parts of the world that are really kind of like yeah. popping out at you and all oh, the smokes like this, this area is like really getting down with the no, for sure. style of paint. I mean, you know, the U.S. has always been really big. If for a long time, it was um, it was L.A. And then it, it's over the last three, four years, it's moved more into Miami. Miami, as you know, you're, you're there often is very like very in tune with my style artwork, yeah. contemporary, mixed media, yeah. fun, pop. Um, so Miami's big. Um, and then on, on a global scale, like the biggest uh, in, in this year so far has been Australia. I did a collaboration oh, wow. um, with a the gallery there, Audrey Fine Art, their fantastic gallery. Um, Josh is, is the, the the gallery rep there. He's become a really good friend of mine. I, ne I never thought about Australia. Sydney, Australia, like, oh, I never even thought about going there. I, yeah. Of course, I would want to, but we did a show there um, in the middle of this year, and it went absolutely fantastic. And we're doing shows continuously and selling custom paintings there multiple times a month now. It's been crazy. And that's also, I never thought of that, but I mean, we've done pieces, um, you know, all over the world now. We did uh, Antigua, Puerto Rico, Brazil, Rome, um, sort of everywhere. And it's, there's, there hasn't been a part where I want, besides Australia, cause I did the gallery show and I was on like their, their morning news network and everything. It was a really cool experience. Um, there hasn't been one place where I would see like it, everything's moving that way. Um, I think it's been like pretty widespread besides Miami, of course. Nice, yeah. nice. That's and then so Toronto, cool. you you mentioned, I haven't actually announced it yet, so you're actually announcing it. It'll be open by the time this airs, but the airport um, is going to be a really, really cool um, event for me and, and gallery. I mean, it's going to be in Terminal 1 of Pearson Airport, like our biggest airport in Canada. And um, we're also working on a big scale mural that's going to go inside the airport as well. So I just think it's going to be a really, like, um, we're in the airport often, so it's going to be cool to see. Yeah, excited. yeah, for sure. Just just the amount of traffic that's moving yeah. through that. Like even York though, when you had popped up in yeah. York though, like yeah. just the amount of traffic and people that are seeing your art and, and not only that, but appreciating it, right? For sure. Like it's it's full of, of love. And that's yep. why it's a heart, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And I, I know you he, he hears it like three thousand times <laughs> uh, when, when I'm telling his stories, but he's colorblind and he yeah. paints with vibrant, vibrant colors. So yeah. how cool is that? And and talk to us a little bit about the technique you use in regards regards to blending those colors and making yeah. them pop because if you, if you stop and you take a look at at what it is you're doing with your art it's it's so beautiful the way you blend it all together right and then yeah. but but and then and then it blows your mind when you're <laughs> like he's colorblind yeah. you know what I mean? so it's like tell me how that even yeah. works i know you, you went on to talk about like layers and textures or whatnot yeah. but yeah, yeah that's you know it's it's just been a long process like because i've been painting for so many years now at the start i would try to rush paintings i would like add i would add blue over here and green over here and all of a sudden I, or yellow over here and it would make like muddy green now why is it made i didn't but i never saw it become muddy green my wife my dad would be like did you mean to make this all ugly brown or ugly green i was like no what do you mean it's blue and yellow oh, so wow. so what happened was all my paintings, as you've seen, are very thick in texture. And the reason is because every single color that I add has to dry fully. Mm -hmm. I can never rush a painting. I have to like add the yellow over here, let it dry. Add the blue over here, let it dry, then wow. continue it. So it's been a process that, um, you know, it's, it's it's been a long process to create paintings, but I'm working on so many paintings at a time that it allows me to like add the blue, and just let that painting sit for a day. And then add the yellow and oh, let that painting. Sick, so I'm just sick. always working yeah. on, I just found my rhythm 
with yeah. that. And I, I also execute, and even saying that, I still execute paintings relatively fast in terms of like the art world. Like when someone wants a custom painting, it's seven to 10 days because as you know, like I'm always in the studio. So I'm working on 40, 50 paintings at a time with no intention of any of them. Just like working on the layers. Work. So when someone wants a customer, I want to finish painting, I can execute it right away. So mm. it's just, it's been a process that I've like just sort of built into my system. Nice. Nice. Yeah. And how many paintings are you doing at once any given time? Like in, in the studio right now, there's probably about 40 paintings on the go. Yeah. Wow. So it's, but there's, you know, when 10 of those are going to the airport, 10 of them are, like, four of them are going to a, um, an office that I'm doing, a couple commissions. So, like, of those 40 in a month cycle, you know, 10 to 12 are, like, sort of moving around. Um, and then I'm just building, just trying to build inventory, keep inventory so people ask. Um, what happened to me, I spread myself thin many times in my life. I mean, I'm trying to do so many different things. Yeah. Build businesses here, build a jewelry. And then I would wake up one day and be like, I have no art. Like, people would be like, <laughs> hey, what paintings do you have available? I'm like, uh, like two paintings, three paintings. And I still have a gallery in Yorkville Village and I would have like not enough paintings there. And I was like, well, I needed to like scale everything back to do more. Hmm. So I need to like take out all those different things. You know, the 80, 20 rule, like 20% yeah, yeah. of the stuff is, is actually making all the money or actually yeah. doing anything. Um, yeah, exactly. So I needed to like scale that back and be like, what is actually working here? And then do more of that. And that's, hmm. that's what I've done over the last like three, four months. And it's helped a lot. Hey guys, if you're liking this episode, don't forget to like and subscribe as that's how we know that you're enjoying the content that you're seeing and uh, we'll keep the thing moving forward. Right, right. Yeah. So dive deeper into the 80-20 and how yeah. that has correlation to the art world as well, right? For sure. Yeah. Well, well, that exactly. Like I get pulled in a lot of different ways because of like, because of how my art is, it lends itself to like collaboration. It lends itself to making different things with it, whether it's murals, whether it's, uh, whether we'll go back to the jewelry specifically because it, it my art does lend itself to, I, I want to make rugs I want to make uh, blankets and shorts and t-shirts and all these different things which is great and I like doing it but it takes away from making art and I have to sell a lot of t-shirts to make up one twenty thousand dollar painting right it's it, it, it's so when you start actually figuring out the work that it takes to execute that like am I gonna be a t-shirt designer yeah. or am I an artist right, right. so that's the biggest unlock that I had to do is like I need to focus on what I'm good at yeah. and then I'll do I'll do outside collaborations where the infrastructure and the build out will be done by a third party yeah. and I'll just do the design, the design. that's yeah, a dream yeah, sure. right? Yeah, and, that, yeah. and that's that's the cycle that I'm rolling into now right. whereas before like my entrepreneurial mind my business mind was like no do it all like right. you can do it all now I'm like wait there's, there's a lot of different ways to do this and go about this and I just need yeah. a little bit of structuring a little bit of planning and that's what we're doing. So do you have, like, will you have a company saying, hey, I want to do a collab piece with you, yep. right? And how would that arrangement work? Yeah, right? no, it, happen it happens often. It would just, it would just be, well, well, it has to align with my style artwork and, and align with my price point. Like, a lot of the collaborations that I'm doing, we share clients. So, like, okay. what I mean by is that someone that's buying a fifteen twenty thousand dollar painting for their house they're probably buying a a nice couch or a nice like the the right. alignment is there i wouldn't do something with something that doesn't align with my artwork mm. um so as long as the alignment there it doesn't matter what the product is and then i can and all like i said my art transcribes very easily onto like anything realistically yeah. it can do it to jackets so to hopefully one day watches whatever it may be yeah. um so they'll come to me and i'll design and we'll create and and then let them put it into the world. And like I've always, all the collaborations that I've done so far, whether it's like Disney or Adidas or Lacoste, they've been like event based or or local based. Mm. Meaning that like I've done, I've done a pop up in Disney. Like so, I'll paint live in Orlando and do all the stuff, and they'll put it into their showroom. But I have never, not yet. And this is the next step: is like done a distribution deal with these brands, and that's the next step for me, so which is like cool. working on developing pieces and 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 structures with them that, that goes into their retail. Um, so that'll be the next step. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Very excited. We should get on a collab with them, eh? Yeah, I'll do something, of course. Hat, right? Does yeah, the collab, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we'll, we'll, we'll love bring, it. We'll bring it to a big media outlet and just, boom, hit it. Yeah, I know. I would love dope, that. Yeah. Because finance, the artist, we're still the financial piece. Of course. We, no. we, we actually have Deception, uh, Mattia, yeah, yeah, who's yeah. designed that. Yeah, yeah, He's taking the details very seriously, and then that's why we have it in the box and everything. But imagine like a, a Riccardi twist. On yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we do a couple, even like a limited drop. We can do, I do that a lot. Like we can we can take the hat, we can take the box, um, and then do like a limited edition, 100 exclusive pieces, whatever yeah, it is, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then that'll just be really fun. Yeah, 
be, be fun for you guys too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lunch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sick. We'll do it before Christmas. So just come, uh, there you let's go. put it into the world now. We've got 100 <laughs> boxes and 100 hats. <laughs> That's I'll it. leave that to you. <laughs> 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 All right. Yeah. Um, so tell us about what the next steps are, right? Yeah. Where you look to expand and scale your business. Yeah. And then what the end goal is. No, it's what's, great. What's yeah, it's a great question. End? Yeah, so I think the next step is trying to be the absolute biggest artist that I physically can first and foremost because we we know how important eyeballs are. You guys do such a good job with the marketing side of things is that I think I knew I need to do a better job. I've done okay, um, but I think that like understanding that the more eyeballs that come in, the more in- inquiries that come in, there's a better chance of the transaction on the back end. So the first step is a, making sure that I'm making the most incredible art that I, f- I physically can. Mm-hmm. Art is subjective anyway. So some people like things, some people don't. But as long as I like it every single day and I'm proud to put it onto the world, then that's all that matters. Mm-hmm. So my first step is making the most incredible art that I love. And the second step is is that collaboration side of it that we're talking about. Is But collaborations also come in the form of galleries. So like, like I mentioned about Australia, working with a third party gallery or dealer that can like sell my art on my behalf, which is absolutely fantastic, A. And then B is brands. Like I, I, I love clothing, I love luxury goods, I love all this stuff. So collaborating with these brands of the world um, is the next step. So the, the end goal for me really is, um, it's, it's a scale game of canvases. And I, 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 there's no exit, like the, there's nothing that I can bundle up and sell. Um, it, it's me, it's, it's to my core. Uh, which is good and bad, right? You know, my business mind is always like, let me figure out how to like scale this and structure this into like some big web. And then my art side of me and like the reality side of me is like, just keep making good things in the world and good things will come. And that's what I truly believe. So the end game is like, hopefully I'll be able to continue continue to sell art and and I will and I'll just do it at a bigger scale mm. right the, o- the only the next steps in art is like you make less of it for more money like for higher value mm. right so one day my art will be 200,000 a piece instead of 20 and then 300,000 and I'll make less and then whatever that is however that works out to be whenever that comes it will that's really the real exit or the real end game it's just yeah. like to continue making art forever just at a higher scale that's awesome. Yeah. So cool. So cool. Yeah. The little one. Yeah. You think he's going to come into uh, taking on... To art? Taking on, <laughs> taking on the artist? He, he, uh, he says that here? now. He's a, when, when, you, when you ask him what you want to be, he goes, I've never, even, I've never said anything like that to him. But he's like, I want to be an artist like that. Because nice. they just want to be like us. That's sick. But um, yeah. this morning, he just wanted to work out with me. Like it, so, I, you know, the sports side of me wants him to get a shot. I mean, sports are so incredible. Yeah. It's so, so important. Like we team sports and just being in sports growing up teaches you how to work with people, teaches you how to be a leader, teaches you how to be, you know, have resilience through tough times, mm-hmm. be accountable. So sports is extremely important. And I'll definitely use the word. I'll push sports on him as yeah. he's young. And like, I, I want him in every, and tonight we're going to gymnastics, like yeah, just yeah. to get him flexible and, and strengthening. Right. I was like, so I, I'll push him in the direction of all these um, different things, hopefully he likes them. Baseball is the one thing that I can train him in because I, I played and coached at like the highest level. Mm. Um, so I can definitely hope that he likes baseball. But otherwise, um, you know, you know, hopefully he's a good student. He just does what he wants. But I just nice. like, uh, because uh, like we mentioned early, because my wife works with me, it's been a joy to be able to like be with them all the time. And like yeah. when I go away for a lot of the trips that I go on um, and I'm like at my studio, like they come. So yeah. it's been... Um, it's been really nice. He's a, he's a good little boy, and we got a second on the way, so we're excited nice. about that. Yeah, thank bro. you. Very very cool. And where is it that you feel you need to make improvements in regards to stepping up your business, and where are you going to allocate your focus on, on on being able to do that? Because I think a lot of times when you know entrepreneurs like yourself that are kicking a lot of ass are sitting in 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 the seat for for the audience to watch on a podcast or a radio show or whatever it might be everyone feels like it's it's not attainable right yeah. or or they're so far ahead or where do i start or he, they're perfect you know and i'm not right and 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 i like to show that you know we have stuff to work on too of course. right and, yeah. and there's a lot of improvements we can make so what are, what like, Talk to us a little bit about something that you're focusing on now that you're, you're trying to elevate. Right? It's, and it's so important. You know, the one thing that when I look back at how I was able to build everything, whether it's the galleries, whether it's like the distribution globally, it was because I was working on the business and not in it mm. because I had nothing in it. 
but especially like rewind seven, eight years ago, no one was really buying my art. So all I could do was think about the structure and development of the business. Mm. I wasn't day-to-day painting, running to meetings, running here, running there. I was just thinking about the business. And now, like just, just very recently, honestly, just last few months, I'm finally taking a step back and saying like, what what will it take? What what are the what are the steps that are necessary to get me to that next level? So really training my mind back to what it was before and figuring out like, okay, these are the steps that I took back then. How can I elevate that now? Mm-hmm. So like that's the first thing, just really taking a step out of it so I can work on the business, not in it. And then secondly is and we mentioned this early is is, is my health because the the number one thing is like I need to be active I need to be strong I need to be healthy to be able to do all this stuff run around like we do yeah. you know running even even all the flights like even all the things we we want to be active dads we want to be you know active in our business for our employees for our friends and we want to be incredible husbands to do all that you need a lot of energy yeah and so that's the one thing that I've I've, I've had a very big struggle with my health overall because you get into you get into these these rhythms of two three months go by and you're like I just ate like crap for three months I didn't go, I went to the gym like I didn't go to the gym mm-hmm. like and then I I feel slog I feel sluggish I'm not executing like I should be I don't have like that same snap so like that's something I'm really 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 focused on and trying to be is take all the different angles to make sure that my health is a one so I can execute everything I have to good for you that's yeah. awesome yeah they, 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 I refer to it a lot as the wheel of life it's what I learned from my life coach and there's uh, everything in the wheel are the spokes yeah right? and, and one is is the health and fitness and i know that if i want to be operating optimally yes i have to be tending to that at and that's at the top of the list right or else i'm just no matter what else i'm doing on that spoke whether it's spirituality family and friends career uh building wealth i'm not giving it 100 yes if my health's not on my side and right? we got to find the time for it a lot of people yeah. make the excuses and like I, I say this bluntly but they are excuses we work out at 5 a.m yeah. and why why because our days are our days are busy like yeah. we cannot work out at, at 9 30 or yeah. in the afternoon because you got a lot of things to do so we're finding the time to execute on the things that we believe in like mm-hmm. you just mentioned if it's one of your spokes of life then you should probably tend to it so you look at your schedule when you look at your 24 hour block and you you say okay i need seven hours of sleep whatever people need there's a lot of hours left then you got you got 10 hours that i need to like i need to be with my my employees and in the office i need three hours to spend with my son i still got two extra so like what I don't even know if that added up to twenty four, but you yeah, st- yeah, you got time. Yeah, like you yeah. still you still have time. You just got to make it work. So just cutting out those excuses is something that I've been trying to work on and doing my best doing. And you you know it as a high performer. Nice, nice. That's awesome. Yeah. What was the very first painting you sold? First painting I sold. Not oh, gave away. Good. Yeah, 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 yeah. And how much did it go for? Um, so I, I did a small gallery uh, at a in a hotel. Sorry, in a condo in Yorkville, and it was probably I think it was to one of my aunts for like okay. four hundred bucks. Nice. For, like it was a. Yeah. I remember like two canvases cost me like four hundred dollars. I was like, let me just break even on the thing. I, I think it was four. Yeah, that was probably it was one of, my. You know, my my family and friends were the only people that came to my first three shows, right. to, and and my paintings were, you know, in that four hundred to thousand dollar range, whatever, depending on the size, of course. And I, I was very grateful, and and they know this, and I still am grateful for them to this day, um, because if they, if like a couple of my aunts and a couple of my uncles and a couple of cousins didn't buy those first paintings that just covered the cost of the show. I wouldn't be here today. Right. Like I wouldn't have kept going. Right. They gave me this like sense of you could do this. Like you didn't lose money on this. Mm-hmm. And even if I did, like it was still fun. People people now have it on in their house. So I'm very grateful for those people in my life that were able to just like just give me the 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 boost to go like hey keep going. And then we've we've had a, I've had a couple friends and you know third party fr- friends of friends that have bought art like in those early stages that gave me the confidence to be like you can do this. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very grateful for those people. It's they're nice. important. Yeah absolutely. And the last painting you've sold and yeah. how much that's gone for? Um, it was this morning. This <laughs> 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 is morning. Oh, it was a uh, big painting. I, I sold for thirty two thousand. Nice. Yeah, so it was a big right painting on. though, but it was yeah. it was a big piece. Um, but yeah, all my pieces are in like the fifteen to twenty five thousand dollar range. Like smaller it would be around the fifteen, and then it ranges up to the most expensive piece I've sold was sixty five thousand. That was a big piece. It was like ten foot by five foot. Wow. Yeah. Very so cool. that was um that was a big piece, um, and then yeah, I do a lot of like build outs for. 
uh, offices and different stuff. So the, those those projects as a whole are obviously a lot bigger because they're buying multiple pieces and whatever yeah. it may be. Um, but yeah, they're usually in that range. And what is it that when can you start charging more? I get, I get the demand question. aspect of it, right? Like where you're becoming more recognized, your followers are growing. Yep. There's not any more time on the clock, yep. right? So, yep. it, it. But when is it that you know and you have that feeling? I can take it from here to there. Yeah, it's a great question. So because I never had a third-party gallery represent me or anybody tell me what to charge, mm. it truly did happen organically for me. And because of Yorkdale, because of the traffic mm. in Yorkdale, I think it really helped me set the trajectory of my price point because I started out at 1000 to 2000 and then every single painting I would make sold. So you're like, okay, let's try 2500 to 3000 I mean, this has been a 10-year journey. Yeah, I'm making yeah, it sound fast. Yeah, but yeah, you know, once once I'm at 3000 to 5000 everything sells. And I'm like, oh, okay, well... Let me try six to seven. Yeah. It happened very organically. So when I look back at the last 10 years to now be at the 15 to 25 range, it's just been because if I, if I put up all my paintings at 5,000, I'm not saying this in a, in a funny way, but like they would sell like mm. immediately the whole entire collection would sell. Yeah. That sounds great. But then how do I eventually step up? So you need, I needed to make myself uncomfortable. You needed to hire the extra employee. You need to get the bigger space. You need to put yourself in uncomfortable situations yeah. to push that level. Yeah. And that's sort of the way I've done it. But it's been a 10 year horizon of slow incremental raises. And that's why I always stayed away from galleries and, and agents because they just want, in, in all fairness to them, they take 50%, which is cool. Galleries, you know, they done their work. But they just want to double your price to make more money for themselves mm. when that's not a true reflection of your price. Mm. Like when I was selling art at 5000 bucks, I had a bunch of galleries. Be like, oh, we can sell your art for 20000 no problem. I'm like, no, no, we can't. Like maybe you have a couple clients, but then mm. what happens if you drop me? Or like what? I, now my price point's at 20000 It's artificially inflated. Mm. So I just never let that happen. I just let wow. it happen. I let it happen organically. Very cool. Yeah, that's it's just awesome. been a slow process. Yeah, I love that. Love that. And uh, so what is it that is your biggest why? My biggest why? Your why. What's the yeah, why? Yeah, it's, it's being able to, I mean, my family is first and foremost. And that, that's not only my wife and son who are extremely important. It's my parents. It's my friends. It's like all my, my core group of people that I want to continue to see. So my why is being able to like create a life it built around the people and things that I love to do. So if, if art, art allows me to do that because I can paint after my son goes to bed mm -hmm. so I can spend the nights with him. I can paint early in the morning. So the why is to be able to continue creating artwork at scale that affords me and gives me the benefit of time to buy back my time right. and then to do the things I love. And the things I love often change, but the, the true why is to be able to spend as absolutely much time as possible on, I got a hundred years left on this earth. I want to be able to spend it with people I love. Beautiful. Love it. Love it. Love yeah. it. Thank you very much for your time, sir. I know thank it's you. extremely valuable. No, thank you. No, no. <laughs> your time uh, is, and I'm so grateful for it. Yeah, definitely. You're an inspiration. Be hitting you up for a collab on. on yeah, the yeah, yeah. We're done. We we'll said it here first, so board. it's done. Yeah, and then I got to show you the podium on the uh, the little. Uh, no, the, what, what do they call those things? The, uh, it's on the podium, but it's the the rise. No, it's on the rise. Oh, yeah, my little podium. podium. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I got to show you my little podium. Yeah, so I, I, oh, okay, cool. That up, right? Nice. Okay, cool. Yeah. We got to do the um, the poor credit as well. We'll yes, do it next week. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, But yeah. Done. Thank you. Appreciate Beautiful. it. I know your time's valuable. You're awesome. You're an Thank inspiration. You. Love what you're doing. Love everything that you represent. Love to be aligned with you these days. I feel very grateful that I'm able to call Me you. Me too. Not only a friend. Yeah, but, thank you. But uh, a business associate as well. Thank you. Yeah. Very grateful. <laughs> right on. Guys, you know the drill. Like, subscribe. That's how we know that you guys like the show. So we'll keep it going. And uh, yeah, tune in next week for another episode of What Would It Cost?